Hello, spooky friends, and welcome back to another episode of Spooky Repot with me. If you're new here, hey, my name is Fern. I make all different types of planty content here on my channel. And throughout the month of October, we do something called Spooky Repot, where I share subscribers' scary, paranormal, spooky stories, and we repot some plants and usually have a little October themed DIY twist in there. It's super fun. I love this series so much, especially because it encourages me to get a little bit more creative. So thank you so much to everybody who has submitted stories. If you would like yours to be featured, you can email me at the email on the screen. I will also have all the information in the description box down below. I also just wanted to let y'all know that I now have these cool stickers on the merch shop and I'm obsessed with this. I've been dying to put this on something but I just wanted to be able to show it to y'all first. So of course that is linked down in the description box as well. The Spooky Repot merch will be available until the end of October. Once again, a massive thank you to everybody who likes, shares, and comments on these videos. I appreciate that so much. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about what you're gonna watch me work on throughout this video. So this is the pot that I created. Um, I decided to paint a terracotta pot, as you can see. And this was my first time doing any type of like more intricate painting on plant pots. I did do some painting last year, but it was just very simple, kind of like silly designs. Like I did the two ghosts, which I love. It's very cute, but I kind of wanted to challenge myself a little bit more and challenge myself, I did. <laughs> yeah, this was honestly a bit of a struggle. It looks good like from far away. It's the vibe. I love the whole energy of this. I wanted to choose just a few kind of witchy elements. So I decided to put a few crystals here and then I did a can melting candle, obviously, very cute, and I added some like metallic paints, um, so cute. And then just a couple pieces of lavender over here. So I love the way the whole thing looks, I'm really happy with it, and it was really fun to do. Um, and I really want to paint more of my terracotta pots, even just like throughout the year, not just for this series. So if any of y'all are artists out there, please leave me your tips down below in the comments because yeah, this was very hard for me. I think that it w I didn't have the right brush. Like it was just very hard to control the brush or maybe it just takes more experience, but I suspect that I need to get a different brush. Anyways, that's neither here nor there, but um, yeah, that's what I did for the pot. And then for the plant, as you can see, we have some syndapsis in here. This is actually, I was gonna say we have two different ones, but um, this actually came from the same plant. So I originally just had this beautiful jade satin syndapsis, which look how stunning it is. I love the deep green foliage, so, so gorgeous. Um, and then it started reverting to silver which is where these leaves came from, which it's actually crazy that these came from the jade satin because they're so, so silver. Um, anyways, I cut all the silver parts off and I propagated them so that my jade satin could continue growing dark green and it worked. It has been growing dark green since then. Um, and my silver one is continuing to grow silver. So I decided to pot them together just because I really like the contrast of the silver and the dark green. I don't know if this will keep growing silver. I hope it does because this will just look so cool once it's a more full pot. I felt like this plant situation really matched the energy of the pot and I love the way that the whole thing looks together. Like I said, I can't wait to see it grow more. I think that it's going to look awesome. So yeah, I hope that y'all enjoy watching me paint this and pot this up. All right, I guess it's time for the stories. Enjoy. Story number one. I grew up in a small southern town in rural Virginia. My hometown is nestled between rolling hills of farmland and forests, shadowed by the ancient spine of the Blue Ridge Mountains. My mother's family owned a farm where she grew up her whole life. The farm was built in the late 1860s and is one of the oldest standing properties in my county today. Many people have lived and died on the farm, including my own relatives. My grandfather was a farmer and worked the land until the day he died. 
I was born after his death, but would curiously listen to my mother recall stories of him while I was growing up, including the story of his death. I was told he had passed from a heart attack while driving a tractor up the long length of our driveway. Years later, when I was around 10, my grandmother passed away and my family inherited the farm and we moved in shortly after. Initially, living at the farm was like one big adventure. I explored every nook and cranny of the house, including the barn and sheds in our yard. As time passed and renovations to the interior and exterior of the property took place, things started to shift, or rather, reveal themselves. One afternoon, as I was playing in an open shed where farm equipment and tractors were once stored, I saw something move from the corner of my eye. Without turning my head, I strained my eyes to see what was in my peripheral vision, too scared to directly face the source of the movement. As I stared over to the shadows lingering in the back corner of the shed, I saw a tall, blurry figure standing there. It appeared to be wearing overalls and what looked to be a hat, but before I could fully register what was there, the figure vanished. A few years later, I was playing in the snow with a friend in my driveway. We sled down the icy paved road until it was well past sunset. My friend and I quickly shuffled into the house for warmth, making our way to the kitchen for snacks. The food pantry was in the back of the kitchen where there was a large window that overlooks the driveway. When I was turned away from my friend for a moment as I was reaching into the pantry, he suddenly shrieked in horror. I turned back quickly to ask what was wrong. He pointed at the window and began to yell, What was that? Who was that? I panicked, looking frantically out the window with him to see who or what just walked past the clearing, staring into the dark, empty road. We quickly locked the doors and regrouped. I asked him what he saw, and he said a man walking down the driveway. He continued to describe this man as tall, thin, and wearing overalls with a hat. My blood went cold. My memories of seeing the figure all those years before came rushing back. Several days later, I worked up the courage to ask my mom more details on my grandfather's passing, specifically asking her what outfit he was wearing when he died. She chuckled and said, well, the one he wore every day, overalls and a hat. Story number two. This story takes place 10 years ago when I lived with my parents and my brother and sister-in-law. My bedroom was upstairs, and at the time, my parents weren't home, so it was just the three of us. I was studying piano, and in exam season, I used to have insomnia, so at any time of the night, I would go to my piano, as it was in my bedroom, and study some more. The night in question was just another night where I couldn't sleep, so I went to play some piano, using a pedal that muffles the notes, making the sounds appear very, very quiet. As I was playing, I got some notes wrong, so I stopped to mark in the music sheet the spot I needed to practice some more. As I was doing so, I heard some footsteps coming from the hall that separates my and my brother's bedrooms. I immediately froze. I thought perhaps I was still playing too loud and woke them up, so I was going to hear some lecture about waking people up in the middle of the night. I quickly jumped to my bed and waited for my brother to open the door. He never did. I waited to hear the footsteps go away, but I never heard it. I was petrified, even though it was just my brother. The next evening, I asked them if they heard me playing piano late at night, and my sister-in-law said she wakes up to my brother going to the bathroom almost every night, but on that particular night, he slept until the next morning. I made them swear they were telling me the truth. I couldn't believe it. The sound of the footsteps were so clear to me. Even to this day, I can remember them so well. That dragging of the slippers on the wooden floor. I never played the piano at night again, and I never heard those footsteps again. I still get chills remembering that night. Story number three. My parents got divorced when I was a small child, and since they lived quite far from each other, I'd spend most of my time with my mom and visit my dad and his parents for a few weeks for summer holidays and such. 
the weirdest thing happened when I was visiting them as a 12 year old. It was a hot Friday in August and we were spending time in the communal gardens. I was entering my teenage years and was easily annoyed with my father, so I went out for a walk around. Finally, I sat down at the far end of the gardens, next to the back entry gate, and was just kind of hanging out there when on the other side of the fence noticed a beautiful rough collie dog approaching the gate. I was obsessed with these dogs as a child, so it grabbed my attention. Moments afterwards, the dog owner came over. She was probably in her late 20s, and from the start I felt like she reminded me of someone, but I didn't know who. We started talking, and I kept feeling like I'd met her before. We had some sort of philosophical discussion, and at some point she looked at her watch and said, Well, it's 4.07pm, and your life has just changed significantly. Which I found strange, but brushed it off at the time. She said she had no more time and had to go. I was supposed to go back to my mom after the weekend, but I was having a great time playing with my cousin, so I begged my grandma to call my mom and persuade her to let me stay another week. My grandma called her, but after having a stern-faced conversation on the phone, told me I had to go back home. I was angry about that, but ultimately had no choice. When I came back to my hometown, my mom sat me down and told me the reason I had to come back already was because my great-grandmother had passed away and I had to get back to attend the funeral. She was kind of another mother figure to both my mom and me, and since it was the first family death for me, in a way it ended my childhood. Some weeks later, we were helping out my great-grandfather clean up some of grandma's possessions to help him deal with the grief. I came across old pictures of her and her sisters, and suddenly realized that the odd lady with the dog I met looked just like my great-grandmother when she'd been younger. Eventually, I worked up the courage to ask my mom when exactly Grandma Cam had died. I already knew the date fit, but I grew cold when my mom said, I think it was about four in the afternoon. I still get goosebumps when I think about it but I'm so grateful that she came to visit me and say goodbye as I was far away at the time. Story number four. I grew up in a newly built house with a forest as our backyard. I had never been a sleepwalker, but in this house on multiple occasions, I would wake up in different rooms of my house with no recollection as to how I got there. One day my dad asked why I'd walked into their room in the middle of the night. He said I opened the door and just stood there staring at them, not saying anything. My dad guided me back to my room and tucked me back into bed. A few nights later, I met a young girl who glowed white. She had a long white dress on and told me she liked my toys. I would hear her walking up and down the stairs at night even though our stairs were carpeted. My dad worked from home and would say that he heard the kitchen cupboard slam shut through the day when no one was home. The girl told me she would slam them because she was mad that I left her at home. I have since moved away from that house and have never sleepwalked or heard from the girl again. Story number five. I grew up in a house that was built in 1910. My paranormal experiences in that house happened so often that I learned to ignore the spirits that would try to bother me. Whenever my sister or I would tell people about our scary experiences in the house, nobody would ever believe us. I moved out of the house and got married in 2020, and my husband and I bought a little house with no dark history. I thought that my ghost problems were behind me, but soon I began seeing the same tall, pale ghost that haunted my childhood. I never told anyone because I figured they wouldn't believe me. My husband grew up in China with parents who were very skeptical of anything supernatural. So as you'd expect, he was an avid denier of ghosts. But that all changed a few weeks ago. I was lying in bed watching TV around 3am. 
My husband was about to go to bed, but decided to get a glass of water before lying down. Our house is single story, so I could hear him walk to the kitchen and pour a glass of water. But after he poured the water, it went silent. Of course, I didn't think anything of it, but then I heard him run down the hallway towards our bedroom. Before I could even blink, he slammed the door to our room open. I sat up in bed to see him standing in the doorway with all the color completely drained from his face. He looked at me and stuttered out the words, There's a ghost. At first I thought he might be pranking me, but then he proceeded to perfectly describe the ghost that had appeared to me throughout my entire childhood. He doesn't question the existence of ghosts anymore. Story number six. Driving my kids home from school one day, I was stopped at a red light, and when the light turned green, I started to roll my car forward. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a good friend standing on the footpath beside my car waving frantically at me. I turned to look at him, and there was no one there. But I'd turned my head just in time to see and avoid a truck that was running the red light. It would have likely killed me and my kids if Tim hadn't been there. The thing is, I'd been to Tim's funeral just a few months before. I'm a diehard science nerd, and my experience has given new meaning to the law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only converted from one form to another. Our energy never dies, we just change form. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed the stories and don't forget to like and leave a comment down below.